uh, Europe looking ahead and beyond the next two years. That is what we are going to focus on with the many challenges that Europe, our continent, is facing these days. And let me start with you, Minister. Uh, you know Europe inside out. You were a member of the European Parliament. Now, obviously, you are the Minister for European Affairs. Uh, from Romania, if, you, if you're looking from where we are, from Bucharest, from Romania, towards Europe, towards the state of Europe, um, what is the picture like? What is the picture like for you? Is this an, it's a, is it a, is it is is it a optimistic view that you're seeing looking ahead? Uh, g give us a view, your personal and the Romanian view, as far as the EU is concerned. Yeah. So first of all, thank you uh, for the question, and I'm really happy to be here at the Bucharest Forum, and I would like to thank the organizers for having such an important event here in Romania. It actually is the most important one they are organizing in this part of Europe. And it's a great opportunity to discuss about Europe, but also to discuss about Romania's place in the world and in Europe. And indeed, of course, uh, I'm not going to say anything especially new about it, about the fact that yeah. currently the European Union is trying to find a, a new way, a new identity, a new path. And there are different proposals already on the table. There are some differences and at the same time some similarities between the different proposals that are currently debated at European Union level. We have, first of all, of course, uh, the speech of President Juncker uh, that referred, of course, in his speech on the State of the Union to this idea that we need a more united Europe, a more democratic Europe. A Europe, of course, that needs, of course, to find uh, the resources for its future within its members to discuss more with the members and breathe with both lungs. Actually, this is a call actually to unity, a call to unity that to which Romania answers in a positive way because Romania believes the same way that indeed Europe needs to be united and of course we need to all work together in, in building the future of Europe. And the fact that uh, in his speech he mentioned several times uh, Romania, it's a positive note for us. He referred to Romania directly five times and I'm directly about seven or eight times, which makes Romania the most mentioned country in his speech. So, of course, we are rather positive towards his messages and towards this idea that in Sibiu, in the summit that we are going to have in 2019, we are going to debate about the future of Europe and not only about that. Of course, we still need to convince some member states about the, the topic, but it's important for us to have such an important summit in, in our country. In the same time, we have another proposal, the proposal of President Macron that in comes up with very innovative and positive ideas that, of course, we take into consideration, uh, especially because he speaks uh, very frankly about this idea of convention. It's something to which Romania reacts in a positive way because also we also believe that we need to involve more our citizens. We need to involve them in this process, involve the civil society, involve the political parties across Europe in debating about what we want for Europe in the future because it's a fact, you know, after after already 60 years, people are still wondering or asking themselves what would be the future of the Europe, current European Union. And we need to ask them what they expect uh, to come out of Europe. And indeed, there are some uh, po positive proposals. And the fact that he, as a leader, comes up with a positive view on the European Union is something to which, again, we perceive as being something quite positive. But at the same time, there are different discussions about building a consensus. And this was announced in different discussion in the European Council by President Tusk. President Tusk believes, and uh, we support him in this direction, that we can build a broad consensus regarding the future of Europe. And this is, again, a message to which Romania, that Romania supports. So we have different debates, different proposals, some differences, some similarities. But Romania's main message about this is that we want to build bridges between east and west, between north and south, between developed and less developed countries and regions, because unity is essential for the future of Europe. We fought, and we, let's be very frank, so much to get in the European Union mm. that we want this European Union to continue at least as it is and to continue to advance in a positive way. And this is where I think we can bring a positive note, all, also during our activities at European level, but also uh, in the upcoming uh, presidency of the European Union Council that we are going to have in 2019. Mm, we want to be a bridge between East and West, uh, says Minister Negrescu. I think a message that uh, Mr. Pasternak would undoubtedly uh, echo. Uh, then again, uh, let me also ask you, um, how do you want to play this role? How does Romania intend to be 
this bridge between Eastern and Western European nations at times of so many uh, uh, despair and challenges here on this continent? Being today a minister for Romanians living abroad, for uh, Romanians living uh, in uh, Europe, I, uh, I would like to start by mentioning um, one of the answers we received in our consular departments uh, uh, 10 years ago when um, our citizens um, uh, told us we are no Europeans. I, I remember this definition is a very important turning point. Um, today we have um, probably four million Romanians living and working in European Union. And um, they are um, asking themselves every day all those theoretical questions about country of origin, about residency, um, questions related to their identity. And we should answer it from um, both theoretical uh, point of view, but we should find a practical and pragmatical answer. We have today um, an important um, number of Romanians living in the UK. And uh, together with them, we should um, find the pragmatical answer of uh, everyday life aspects. And um, as, as ministries of um, foreign affairs, but of Romanians living abroad, we should address their um, everyday life both from political and theoretical point of view, and we start uh, by um, sending to the parliament a kind of codex diaspora, a new package um, uh, of legislation. But in the same time, we should find with them every day answers related to their um, identity. They should continue to learn and to speak and to address Romanian. They are Romanian, Europeans, Italian, Spanish. Um, in Spain, in the next year, we'll have an important number of students with Romanian roots. They will be in less than five years, uh, new members of European market. Mm -hmm. They will be very active in the European active with a new identity. And uh, we should find a lot of um, answers related to the mobility mm -hmm. within European Union. And uh, we are trying as a uh, as, uh, government to bring them back. It's, but bringing them back, it's not related to the original identity. Mm -hmm. Students or people who will come back later on, they will bring a new identity, mm -hmm. Romanian, European, in the same, in the same time. And uh, I think that we should find the uh, answer to all these challenging questions. Indeed. So, so hopes associated with uh, the many millions of Romanians living abroad that one day they come back and, if you will, add uh, and bring their knowledge uh, and the cultural uh, diversity and richness back to their home country, which uh, uh, bring me to the question, Angela Krista. In Europe, because we heard from Mr. Negrescu, Romania is a proud member of the European Union. Now, we should be honest, and it's no secret that some former, some countries that, that were under former Soviet rule, if you will, and are now part of the European Union, uh, we've been seeing some populist discourse and illiberal uh, tendencies in those countries, even to the point where a country like Poland openly thinks about perhaps leaving the EU at some point. Now, those tendencies cannot be seen here in Romania. It's quite the contrary. 
Uh, why do you think that is? What makes the Romanian model different than in those countries? What I notice, Ali, is that you are uh, asking the Romanian minister to comment on Europe and the European representatives to comment on Romania, so you are putting pressure on us. That's why my job, yes. yes. You are doing a very good job. There you go. Now, what, uh, what does make Romania different um, in, in this uh, respect? Um, difficult to say. Maybe it is linked to the fact that Romanians believe in Europe more than other European citizens. That historically speaking, support for the European Union was always amongst the highest uh, in Romania compared to other, other member uh, states. It's also related to the fact that many Romanians look up to Brussels to find a solution to their problems or to their aspirations. And this is uh, both good and not so good <laughs> because, of course, quite often the answer is rather in Bucharest or even uh, in different uh, regions and counties um, of Romania rather than in Brussels because we have a very clear division of labor where the mandate of legislation is with the European Commission and where it is with the, with the member uh, states. And if we have member states um, in which people are rather reluctant to take well, instructions or legislation from Brussels. This is not the case, uh, not the case in Romania. But if you allow me, I would like to, to bridge a little bit uh, to what uh, the previous speakers uh, uh, said. And Minister Negrescu said that Romania wants to be a builder of bridges. And I dare say, dear Minister, that Romania is already such, uh, such a builder of, of bridges um, in Europe. If we take into account only the millions of Romanians that are living and working abroad, and that did a lot to improve the awareness of other European citizens about uh, Romania, or the fact that uh, Romanians are, as I said before, amongst the most vibrant supporters of further European integration. What is new now with the speech on the State of the Union of President Juncker is that this is recognized publicly at the highest level in the European Commission. I think the time has come for, for this uh, recognition. Moreover, President Juncker, if you want, pushed a little bit further. Uh, it was a friendly push towards uh, Romania to be even closer, if not in, the core group of countries uh, in the European Union, because we do believe that Romania is capable of doing uh, so. And President uh, Juncker gave um, uh, several clear benchmarks. He asked for the immediate accession to the, to the Schengen area, because Romania is already prepared. There is no question about this. And this was a message, if you want, less for Romania, which knows very well that it is prepared, and more for the member uh, states that are still reluctant to allow Romania to, uh, to join the Schengen area. The second benchmark is accession to the Eurozone. There is no doubt about the fact that the core Europe is built around the euro. There is no doubt that most integrative and integrational uh, policies are uh, elaborated around uh, this zone. So if Romania wants to be part of the, of the core Europe, and it does want, again, historically uh, so, then accession to the, to the euro is clearly on the agenda. Now, we know that now Romania is not ready. We know that it is not easy. And that's why we also came up, came up with an offer uh, to, to design a special convergence instrument, pre-accession if you want, or accession, euro accession uh, instrument that we put at the disposal of Romania, both in terms of technical expertise uh, but also uh, funding, so that this preparation is done hand in hand. So we want to clearly give the message to Romania that we want Romania in, in core Europe, we believe Romania 
is able to join uh, Core Europe, and we are going to do um, everything in, in our mandate to help it. Mm -hmm. Minister Negrescu, let's take the long-term view here, if you will. Um, it, it's no secret that both you mentioned the uh, monetary union, um, that the euro crisis, the refugee crisis, of course, all of those, the Brexit, all of those have exposed, if you will, deficiencies, structural deficiencies, have created bad blood amongst member states, uh, even so much to the point that some people are doubting that the EU has a vibrant future ahead of itself. Now, uh, you spoke so passionately about Romanians' contribution to the EU. Um, knowing the institution, knowing the EU, uh, knowing the thinking in, in Brussels, uh, give us your sense, give us a prediction. What makes you optimistic about the future of Europe? Yeah, I will refer basically to, to something else when I explain to you why I'm so optimistic. Because um, uh, independently of the meetings, we meet with people. And I meet with people from across Europe, and I see uh, when discussing with them that they are optimistic about Europe, and they see uh, why Europe is useful. I think we need to engage more with the citizens in order to find that out and stay less in the meetings, meeting rooms where we speak and not listen enough to each other and start engaging more with the citizens to find solutions for the future of Europe. I think when, when the European Union was created at the beginning, uh, no one was uh, afraid of what people may think about building this common union. They simply had a vision. I think today we need a vision about Europe, and I think it's not the easy thing to do today because we have to have to accommodate 27 different mission, missions, uh, visions. It's not an easy task. This is uh, our purpose as ministers for European Affairs, the head of states, their purpose as well, is to try to build this consensus, to, find, to, to try to find this common identity within the 27 visions about the future of Europe. It's not an easy task. I think in this regard, Romania maybe has uh, something to, to add to this vision and also some particularities. The fact that we have 3 million citizens living, Romanians living in different, in different member states, Show us, shows that Romania is actually a European country. Uh, I consider myself as being, especially because I'm young, but not only because of that, a true European. I, left, I lived for nine years abroad, so I came back. I, my entire life is linked to the Europe as it is now, to the capacity to move from one country to another, to have rights in different countries, to have different freedoms. This is a very important thing, and of course, if we speak about the future of Europe, it's very important to leave the, op the doors open to everyone. So like for Schengen, because it wasn't me who mentioned it. Schengen, we respect the rules, we respect the criteria. We have to get in, because we respect everything that was requested to us. With regards to Euro, Euro integration, Romania, I can tell you already, we have reactivated our groups, our working groups on this topic, in order to prepare and come up with a plan for the integration in the Eurozone. Romania wants to be part of the core Europe. It doesn't mean it will be easy. It doesn't mean it will be an, uh, not uh, difficult for us to do some reforms, but we are ready to do those reforms because Romania knows its path towards Europe. And in this regard, it's important to enter in contact and discuss, and I think the current presidency, because I see my friend uh, Mati from Estonia here as well, the current presidency, the future presidency of the European Council, really play a role in building this large consensus, in building uh, this future vision of the European Union. Of course, we are, we are mediators. We have to listen to everyone. We have to build a consensus. But I think the presidencies can play a role, especially if they manage to do this role of mediating. If we manage to mediate, we can reach a consensus. And I, I can tell you already, not only because he's here, the Estonians already do a great job in this regard. And it will be a good first step and a good example for us and for the upcoming presidency. And I'm sure Liliana, I don't know if she's here already, uh, the minister for the presidency, uh, the Bulgarian minister for the presidency, she will tell you the same thing, that we are working towards this building, this future vision of the European Union. Mm, and uh, Mati Masikas, whom you mentioned, of course, will be uh, in the subsequent discussion now, and then can, t can take up your comment and uh, remarks. Uh, um, I'm going to take your questions in just a moment before we wrap up, though, uh, Ms. Pastarnak, uh, again about the Romanians abroad. I, I think th this is obviously the issue that you are working on on a daily basis. It's an important one. How do you, you, you spoke about the need or the wish, the desire for them to come back at some point. Uh, and, and contribute to the advancement of this country, of Romania. Um, how realistic is that, though? What, what kind of incentives can you offer 
to the millions of Romanians abroad to come and contribute their knowledge here uh, on the ground? Actually, we start uh, this summer a campaign to, to inform them more about their rights and uh, uh, to inform them more on our programs uh, and incentives uh, uh, to come back and to settle down back in, in Romania. Uh, but in the, in the same time, it's, it's very important when we are discussing with uh, our citizens who are living um, abroad, um, we are uh, not seeing um, uh, the original point of departure mm -hmm. and, uh, and the resident country as, as opposites. They, uh, they are living together in the, in, in, in the, at the origin at the residence um, point, because they are still linked to the original community. Uh, they are sending uh, funds home, part of the family is uh, still home. They are building houses uh, home. They are contributing to the growth uh, home. They are seeing the, the departure point as part of, of their life. They are dreaming about the moment of um, coming back home, but in, in different ways and in a very personal way. Mm -hmm. Part of them are thinking about integration, and um, uh, they have already families and uh, um, still looking at their um, European careers as part of different destination. We have Romanians who uh, left an European member state for another one, living in another one, um, and they are, they are trying to contribute to the European growth, and they are seeing Romania as, as part of, uh, of this process. In the same time, we are trying, and Victor mentioned this, that we are trying to inform them more about their rights in, uh, in different countries in uh, Europe. Sometimes they are thinking that Europe is an even space with even rights and an even context. They are thinking that if they integrate themselves very well in Italy and they will move in UK, it will be a similar integration uh, path. And this is not the case all the time. And we are trying also to support them um, on, on this way and also to give them more and more information uh, on our uh, daily, daily context of Romania and trying to attract them to come, to come back. Yeah, important work, obviously, uh, and a challenge uh, for, for this country, uh, particularly with uh, regards in the long view. But uh, before I take the, some questions, uh, Ms. Krista, I feel like briefly, if you can tell, let's talk about the EU's and particularly, obviously, the EC's expectations of, of Romania. If you look at this country and how it has developed and what it contributes uh, to the European Union, even as of today, um, where would you say, having Minister Negrescu right next to you, uh, what kind of advice would you give him as far as, you know, where's still space for improvement? You know, we are very careful to, to be giving uh, advices because you never know how they are, they are taken. Publicly, publicly. And un <laughs> exactly. And unsolicited uh, advice uh, is sometimes um, not very, very much appreciated. Now, seriously, we are exactly as, as the minister um, said, we are in constant uh, contact with our uh, Romanian uh, counterparts and everything we do, we do together. Uh, and even when we disagree, we disagree, we agree to disagree. Huh? We disagree in agreement. Um, uh, for example, we very much welcome uh, the very impressive um, economic growth of Romania. 
but we do have some concerns uh, regarding the sustainability of this uh, growth. Now, our Romanian partners are reassuring us this is sustainable. Uh, and time will tell, and I hope they are right and we are, we are uh, wrong. Um, another field in which we are working uh, very much together is the fight against uh, corruption, the independence of uh, justice, the rule of law. Here, again, we are very impressed with Romania's uh, track record, and we've been saying uh, this repeatedly in our, in our CVM reports. But of course, we are not yet at the end of, of, of the process of the uh, CVM. On the other hand, we have a joint objective to lift this mechanism as soon as the 12 pending recommendations are, are met and as soon as we receive uh, further reassurance that there will be no stepping back on this. All right, thank you so much for that overview. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I know that Minister Negrescu as well as Ms. Pastarna, you have to leave for a cabinet uh, uh, meeting pretty soon, but I do want to uh, take advantage of your presence here and obviously give the audience an opportunity to address you as well with uh, some questions before we uh, bid you farewell. I know we have microphones here in, in the room. Go ahead, please. Go ahead. Uh, my, my comment is very brief. I, I, my name is Wojciech Garwal. I'm from the Polish Minister of Foreign Affairs. I just wanted to make a small correction because, uh, because you said that some Poles are thinking about um, leaving the EU, but, but that's not the case. Uh, you know, the, no serious politician in Poland is talking about and definitely not the government. And, um, and uh, in fact, uh, Poland, the level of support for the EU in Poland is, is one among the highest in Europe, like probably similar to Romania. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, so the, the, the government um, is very concerned about the future of the EU. And I think the, and exactly uh, is looking at what happened with Brexit and is trying to, to, to be realistic about the, under, in the undergoing currents. And, and trying to, to, to stop further Brexit. And so, so we see ourselves as very much pro-European, but uh, realistic in our assessment. So we are not talking at all about, uh, about poll exit or yeah. just a small correction. Go ahead, please. You can pass on the mic to the young gentleman. Go ahead. Yeah. Again, Muzaffer uh, I'm sure that the, you will be able to report the, but I mean, uh, my question is relating with the, the, how do you see the, the uh, returning back to the main discussions on, on center and the periphery discussions that the, how do you see that uh, the role and the position of to the European Commission or the European institution that the challenges coming from the, the uh, periphery especially in, in these regards to for the Romania that the Moldova and the their Moldova and Ukrainian positions for as an economic uh, I mean, uh, uh, despite the fact that the, the GDP growth in Romania is rising two times with the last five years, still it's then the economic periphery of Europe on the one side. Politically, in the European Union, but the neighboring countries like Moldova, Ukraine, and all others are including Turkey as a, a, the politically periphery. The relations with those countries, in terms of to the liberalization in these countries that uh, support of the European support to the liberaliz liberalization in those countries is very weak when we compare with the past, which is mostly relating with the rise of Euroscepticism in the, the Western European countries and deteriorating the relations with those countries, including Turkey. And for example, in Turkey, Moldova, and Ukraine, to support to the EU accession processes or EU policies is growing down and down. And now my question is regarding to that. These the EU leaders deteriorating these relations specifically with Turkey, we will see that in Brexit, uh, France, Netherlands, lastly Germany and Austria, Turkey like a scapegoat of European leaders, right. which is not helps to the European idea as well. All right, I think that how do you see that? The, how do you evaluate the, these developments? Europe is going to be more illiberal, liberal, or will keep the line of the, the being a liberal all to right. all, not their own selves. Got a point well taken. I think that uh, question uh, is addressed to uh, Ms. Krista. Are there any more questions so I can uh, combine them and then throw it back for one last time uh, to the audience? Go ahead, please. We have two gentlemen here in the first row. Am I missing some on that side, of course, as well? 
Thanks. Uh, I'm Lazar Komanescu, former foreign minister and former ambassador to the EU and Germany. And now I'm uh, working as a senior advisor to the, for foreign policy to the Romanian Chamber of Commerce and Industry. I have uh, two comments or, if you so wish, questions as well. Great. One is related, the, the two of them are related to Romania's declared wish and objective to get as close as possible up to, up to entering genuinely the core Europe. And that has to do with, in my opinion, at least two things. One is the euro. And here I would like to, hear, uh, to, to see what uh, the opinion of Minister Negrescu is. I'm among those who consider that uh, getting into the eurozone uh, the soonest possible would be for, for Romania the better. I know that there are people who say that this is not possible, and I fully agree with this. On the other hand, from uh, contacts which I have had with representatives of the biz biz Romanian business community, I see that there is a wish that Romania does everything which can be done so as to get to this objective as soon as possible. There are, I depicted also others, who do express reluctance, uh, mainly for fear of getting into a much stronger rule-based Echafodage, mm. if I may say so. Mm. Uh, as I said, I'm fully uh, in favor of making every effort for Romania to get into the euro the soon as possible. Second, still on the core, is about PESCO. And here I do, do really see a great opportunity for Romania. And here there is one point which I want to make. Uh, and I'm, uh, I have in mind something which was mentioned by President Macron in his speech to the Sorbonne University. I think that we have to acknowledge if we want to get and to advance into PESCO and in generally into uh, defense Europe, we have to acknowledge the, that there has to be an appropriate correlation between national sovereignty and what President Macron was saying, European sovereignty. I want to hear that, the point of uh, the, the view of uh, the panelists on that as well. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Let's take the last two questions, uh, the gentleman, and then, of course, uh, to my left. I'm Florian. I'm a German fellow. Uh, to my knowledge, Romania has got into the EU, which, which makes sense to think of in terms of the, uh, of the Brussels organizations to take care a bit of building bridges within the EU. When I got uh, Mr. Negrescu's uh, comments about building bridges, uh, I thought in terms of a bit of a wider Europe. So I, I look more at Romania as playing, as playing more into uh, a bit of a, not sense of periphery architecture, but more in terms of, you know, beyond this logic, uh, in terms of expanding influence and, 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 and gaining in terms of a pivotal role mm -hmm. towards the wider Europe and not within the EU. So I would very much like to get your comments on it. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm sure they will be addressed uh, in just a moment. Last question uh, to my left, young strategic leader, I believe. Um, Christina Buzashu from the European Bank Reconstruction and Development um, Department of um, External Relations. Um, thank you for a very interesting and uh, insightful panel discussion. Uh, my question is, um, in the context of the multiple crises uh, currently facing Europe, uh, economic, uh, social, in terms of the migrants crisis, um, also a technological um, and um, a crisis in terms of reconnecting with its, with its citizens. Uh, my question is, what could the EU do to, to make a positive case for itself in front of its citizens uh, to avoid uh, future scenarios uh, like Brexit and other, um, other similar um, sort of anti-EU, Eurosceptic movements? 
Uh, and secondly, uh, could uh, Romania take a leadership role in the region, in Central and Eastern Europe, among um, a wave of Euroscepticism to, to uh, promote this positive image of the EU, especially in the context of the upcoming um, uh, presidency. presidency of the EU Council, and can its diaspora also uh, play a role here? Thank you. Uh, Ms. Pasternak, I believe uh, that's a question for you. We have a Romanian living in London. There you go. We're, you know, we got to work on getting her back. That, that's, the, that's the mission. But before uh, we... Mr. Negrescu, there were many questions uh, addressed to you as well as uh, to Ms. Krista. Why don't you get started and uh, see this off? Yeah, just a, a general view, picking up on, on the questions that have been addressed uh, to me and my uh, colleagues. Uh, so, um, you know, about, about the role that Romania can play in the region, actually, and with regard also with the countries that are in the region and are not members of the European Union, so Western Balkans, Republic of Moldova, Ukraine, Indeed, uh, we understand that Romania really has a responsibility to speak about them, about their future cooperation with the European Union. We would like them to further advance in their integration in the European Union, but we also understand that in order for them to advance, they need to do some reforms, they need to comply with some rules, and they need to understand something that Romania st is still understanding today, is that in this uh, family, there are criteria, but there are also values. And this idea of values is quite an important thing. And we try, uh, we try that to, to do that more and more, to speak about common European values that basically unite us in the European Union. And by doing so, I think we can explain also to the general public in those countries that indeed those reforms, those tough, tough changes that they need to, to do are important for them in building a society that is widely deployed that is democratic, but at the same time where their voices are heard. And I think we will not face uh, a return of their population against the European Union. I don't perceive that. I, if we go to the Republic of Moldova, you see that in the last couple of months, things have changed. I mean, within the population, a positive note towards the European Union, but we have to make, and to be very careful in what we do, especially if we refer today to the discussion about the allocation of financial resources to the Republic of Moldova. Do I allocate funds to governments or do I allocate funds to people? My personal note on this is that we allocate funds to people. So indeed, we have to have a broader discussion about that, but not forget about values. And if we refer to that, of course, for us, core Europe or not core Europe, we think the entire Europe is, should be a core Europe. And everyone should be available to participate fully at the development of the European Union, based on common values, but also common criteria. The Eurozone, uh, belonging to the Eurozone, it's an important factor. Uh, Romania always pursued this goal of integrating the Eurozone, but of course we acknowledge the fact that we need to be prepared for the integration in the Eurozone. This is why I said that we restarted the mechanism existing at national level to prepare for this process of integrating the Eurozone. It, not be, it will not be an easy task, but we want in this process not to lose sight on citizens when we do such an integration. They will be the ones that they will see the numbers and figures changing from lay to euro. They will be the one asking us whether or not the prices have increased or not. They will be the ones asking us if it, this was a good thing or was a bad thing. So we need to involve them in this process of reforms and at the same time in involving them in making them sure that this idea and this, the steps that are going to be made in this direction are the right ones. Of course, uh, the Eurozone is a mechanism to, to get in the core Europe, if we may call it like this, but also the security policies and defense policies are quite an important thing. Romania fully participates to all the European Union mechanism in this regard, and we are fully engaged in, in participate, participating at the European mechanism. There are new opportun opportunities appearing. We would like to see those opportunities available for everyone, so if we construct a fund in terms of security, we want to make sure that everyone benefits out of those funds, and indeed, what we do with the funds will, will benefit the security of us all. But it's important to mention that Romania has a perspective, like many states, that a common European defense policy should go alongside and in clear partnership with NATO, which is a clear uh, security um, uh, uh, structure that, of course, ensures the security of, of a lot of our countries, and especially in this part of Europe. And this is a perspective that we are promoting in, in this regard. Uh, so, broadly, <coughs> building bridges, yeah, we, 
want to build bridges within the European Union because today we need to build bridges in the European Union, but also with outside the European Union. But it's clearly that we don't believe there is a periphery. It depends on the perspective. Maybe here I'm too optimistic. Uh, I don't look at uh, Romania as being in the east as being at the periphery. Maybe not in the center immediately, but it's not about that, it's about the perspective uh, through which you look. And we really believe that Europe, European Union, is a whole. So we are all in the center. The idea, is this center efficient? Is this center working? Is this center uniting us? Is this center democratic enough? It's about making the center with everyone clearly um, uh, useful and uh, successful. And it's about that, so clearly here, uh, we, we want to construct and promote this perspective. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for ending on an optimistic note. Uh, you're 32 years old, so if you're not going to be optimistic now, I don't know when. I think, I think uh, your youth is, is uh, clearly a good indication for things to come in this country. Uh, uh, Ms. Krista, you were addressed uh, a couple of times, particularly the role of the EU. Well, let me first uh, start by saying I'm optimistic too, even if I am a little bit older than 32. 23. <laughs> 23. Um, yes, there were excellent questions all. I'll try to, um, to briefly go, go through them. Um, about the, the support of the Polish people for the European Union, it is true. Uh, it is a great support and I think it is also directly linked to the EU funding that comes mainly through, uh, through the cohesion uh, uh, policies. Because like, like Commissioner Kretsu said, there is hardly any village, any commune, any town, any city in this part of Europe that has not benefited uh, uh, from the EU funds. So it, it comes naturally when you receive this type of solidarity, you give uh, back your support to the, to the EU project. Um, the, the second intervention, I wonder if you are from Turkey, Yes. Turk ah, Musun. Tamam. But let's answer in English anyway. Let, let's, yeah. yeah, maybe yeah. afterwards I yes. can practice my Turkish. Uh, you said that uh, Turkey is a scapegoat. Uh, you feel that Turkey is a scapegoat um, in, in, in Europe. Well, join the club. We, Europe, we are used to be the scapegoats <laughs> for, for many things that, uh, that go wrong. Um, as, as far as the support for the EU in countries like Turkey is concerned, having lived and worked uh, in Turkey for a number of years, what I noticed is that uh, Turkish people are also very proud uh, people. And part of their, let's say, vote against the EU was, if you don't want us, then we don't want you. So I'm not sure how deep how true uh, the, the fell of support for, for, uh, in, for integration into the EU uh, is, and whereas it's not more linked to the, to the fact that their pride has been hurt. Now, will the EU go in an illiberal or liberal direction? For us, there is only one direction. As President Juncker said, the EU is not only an economic community. It might have started as an economic community, but is a community of values. Values such as freedoms, equality, rule of law. And all these are values linked to liberalism and not to the opposite uh, direction. And if I go to the last question, what can EU uh, do to make a positive case for itself? Um, I take inspiration from across the Atlantic to answer this, uh, uh, this question. Maybe the time has come for citizens to ask themselves what they can do for Europe. I think Europe is doing quite a lot. Uh, and as uh, First Vice President uh, Timmerman said, he said those who are against Europe are extremely well organized and vocal. Those who are in favor of Europe need to be as vocal if we are to make a case for the European Union. So paraphrasing uh, JFK, if you will, ask not what the EU can do for you, but what you can do for the EU. That's, uh, well, we'll take that for the second discussion, which is following closely. But before we wrap this up, of course, Ms. Pasternak, let, let's get your remaining thoughts and particularly the question from the young lady. I, I, I think that um, Romanians living today in Europe, they are carrying on with them their 
enthusiastic confidence on European values. And um, I uh, consider that they are the ambassadors of Europe in every community they settle, they settle down. And uh, actually, um, I, am, I am joined Victor, it's not a peripheric and central uh, approach. They are, uh, in a way, more European in their new community sometimes than their, the locals. And um, actually, they are uh, engaged in a huge effort to be part of the European life there and uh, to be part of the administrative, to be elected in the new environment and they are trying to be active as European, sometimes more than us home. And uh, I think that this is our main contribution to Europe today. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is, of course, a Bucharest Forum, so it's only fitting that we kicked off the EU part of the discussion with a view from Romania. It's been a, indeed a fascinating, very educational uh, discussion for many international uh, panelists, I'm sure. So thank you so much. I know you have to rush off to a cabinet meeting. Good luck with that. Uh, big round of applause for our panel. Thank you so much. Yeah.